Before Abraham, I am Neville Goddard Lecture, November 10, 1968. Consciousness, expressing itself in various forms or levels of awareness, is all-encompassing. Every individual is a manifestation of this consciousness, and despite the diverse levels it may express, it remains indivisible. There is no genuine separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be fragmented. One might perceive themselves as rich, poor, a beggar, or a thief, yet the essence of their being remains constant, regardless of the central concept held within the manifestation. It is always simply I am manifesting in different forms or self-concepts. I am what I am, this encapsulates the profound definition of the absolute, the foundational principle upon which everything rests. I am is a continuous awareness of consciousness. The focal point of consciousness is what one is feeling. While one may forget their identity, origin, or nature, they cannot forget that I am. The consciousness of being persists irrespective of the degree of forgetfulness about who, where, or what one is. I am is that which, amid myriad forms, remains unchanging. This leads us to a significant realization, whether good or bad, each person is truly the determiner of their own destiny, and the self-concept they uphold shapes the world in which they exist. Everything hinges on one's attitude towards themselves. What is not affirmed as true for an individual cannot materialize in their world. Understanding that consciousness is the sole reality, considering oneself in various lights, and embodying the chosen self-concept liberates one from the tyranny of external causes. Freed from the belief that there is an external cause beyond one's own mind influencing their life. In the state of an individual's consciousness lies the key to understanding the phenomenon of life. If one's self-concept were different, everything in their world would be different. It is only through a transformation in consciousness, truly altering the self-concept, that one can construct more enduring abodes and encounter more favorable outcomes. By outcomes, we mean experiencing the consequences of these revised concepts in one's world. This is because consciousness is the sole reality the primary and solitary cause substance of the phenomenon known as life. Nothing can exist for an individual unless it is through the consciousness they impart to it. Therefore, it is with consciousness that one must grapple, as it is the sole foundation for explaining the phenomenon of life. Hence, what presents itself as circumstances, conditions, or even material objects is, in truth, only the product of one's consciousness. Nature, viewed as an external entity or a collection of external entities, must be overlooked amidst the maze of contradictions, conflicts, and paradoxes in one's life. Only one principle is at play, your consciousness in operation. The world operates without its own will, by this, I mean it lacks inherent motivation but is compelled to manifest its concept, that is, the organization existing solely in your mind. It is always organized in the likeness of everything believed to be real and accepted as true. Health, wealth, beauty, and genius are not inventions, they are manifestations brought about by the organization of one's mind, by the concept of oneself. And one's concept of oneself is everything accepted as true, whether consciously or unconsciously. Reactions provide insights into one's psychological dwelling place and reveal where they live psychologically. The manner in which you navigate the external, visible world and its significance in your daily life should be clearly and thoroughly understood. At the core of the primary cause lies consciousness, thus, consciousness serves as the ultimate substance of all things. The prevalent illusion that governs individuals is their unwarranted belief in external causes beyond their own consciousness. Every occurrence, action, and emanation from an individual is a direct outcome of their state of consciousness. Therefore, it becomes imperative to actualize your envisioned future as a present reality. Persist in this endeavor until you adopt a sensation of the wish being fulfilled. By aspiring to embody a different persona, you can construct the ideal personality you desire to become and assume that you already inhabit that persona. Continuous commitment to this assumption, until it becomes your prevailing sentiment, guarantees the realization of your ideal. The ideal you aim to attain is perpetually ready to be lived, yet until you make the decision to embody it, it remains concealed. Consequently, your approach should involve immersing yourself in the desired state.
solely you, with undivided responsibility, accept the challenge of incorporating this newfound and more comprehensive self-concept and bringing forth the envisioned ideal. It is crucial to recognize that the methods of mental and spiritual understanding differ significantly. This is a realization that perhaps only one person in a million comprehends. Intellectual knowledge is gained through external observation, comparison, analysis, and definition through thought processes. Spiritual knowledge, however, is acquired by becoming the thing through thinking from that perspective. You must embody the essence itself, not merely discuss it or observe it, similar to a moth that, in its quest to understand the flame, is willing to sacrifice itself. Likewise, you must be willing to relinquish your existing state to transform into the new, elevated version of yourself. To comprehend what health is, you must consciously be aware of being healthy. To understand security, you must consciously be aware of being secure. Therefore, to embrace a new and improved self-concept, you must assume that you already embody what you aspire to be and live with faith in that assumption. Consequently, it becomes apparent that waiting for the new concept to materialize through a natural evolutionary process is futile. Something that requires a specific state for its production undoubtedly cannot manifest without the presence of that particular state. In your capacity to assume the feeling of a better life and a redefined self-concept, you can utilize imagination as a tool to shape your world. The transformations that unfold in your life due to the altered self-concept may be perceived by the uninformed as outcomes resulting from luck, external influences, or mere coincidence. Undoubtedly, the only destiny governing your life is the destiny shaped by your own concepts, your own assumptions, because a position, even if false, if held steadfast, transforms into reality. The ideal you seek and aspire to attain will not materialize on its own accord and will remain unrealized until you envision yourself embodying or possessing that ideal. This can only be achieved through a radical and psychological transformation of yourself, coupled with the possession of a sensation of the wish being fulfilled. Your entire trajectory depends on your attitude towards yourself. Whatever you do not affirm as feasible or achievable will remain elusive, as acknowledging the feasibility and achievability of a goal is the indispensable condition for its realization. All transformation is rooted in suggestion, and its efficacy relies on your willingness to be influenced by it. You must embrace the feeling of the wish fulfilled until this assumption vividly permeates your entire perception of reality. Visualize yourself having already experienced what you desire. I emphasize that you must immerse yourself in the feeling of complete ecstasy regarding your desire until you feel utterly possessed by it. This intense sensation will naturally displace any thoughts conflicting with that specific purpose from your mind. To ascend to a higher version of yourself, you must adopt an elevated concept of who you are. If you cannot envision yourself differently, you will remain in your current state, as stated, he who does not believe that I am, he will die in his sins. John 8 verse 24. If you don't believe you are already the person you aspire to be, you will remain as you are. Through dedicated and systematic cultivation of the feeling of the wish fulfilled, desire evolves into the promise of its own realization. The key to the freedom and happiness you've always envisioned lies in altering your mental positions. Attain mastery by regulating the release of your imagination. By defining your assumptions, you create a mental image, a snapshot of the desired version of yourself. Concentrate on the sensation that you are already embodying that desired persona. Start by envisioning the image in your consciousness, then immerse yourself in the feeling of being in that state, creating complementary aspects through your imagination. The seemingly intangible mental image transforms into an apparently solid reality through your imaginative faculties. The great secret lies in controlled imagination and sustained, focused attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To put it succinctly, by generating the ideal within your mental space, assuming that you are already living in that ideal, you align with it and, consequently, metamorphose into that envisioned image. Thinking from or based on that ideal, instead of merely contemplating it, allows every conceivable state to exist as a potential while you are immersed in that thought. However, it becomes profoundly real when you think within it, from it. Once you grasp the redemptive function of imagination, you hold the key to resolving all your challenges. The exercise of your imagination determines every facet of your life. 
Controlled imagination stands as the sole means for your progress. The realization of your dreams serves as the alpha and omega of all creation. The great secret lies in controlled imagination and unwavering, concentrated attention consistently directed toward the feeling of the wish fulfilled until consciousness alone eradicates any ideas conflicting with your purpose from your awareness. Your sole limitation lies in the lack of control over your imagination and the failure to sustain focus on the feeling of your wish fulfilled. When imagination remains unchecked, and attention falters on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, no amount of prayers, emotions, or invocations will generate the desired effect. Mastery lies in your ability to conjure any image and make your imagination as vivid and real as the natural forms. Only then will you be the architect of your destiny. Laser-focused observation on a single objective expels all other considerations and influences until they are entirely extinguished. The paramount secret to success is to concentrate attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled and steadfastly resist any distractions. All progress hinges on the mastery of attention. The ideas that drive your actions are the ones that hold dominance in your consciousness, the ones where your attention is focused. The idea that excludes all others from your attention's field is the one that compels you to act, easily concentrating on one thing while leaving behind all else progressing towards the goal, Philippians 3 verse 13. This message is for you, the only action you must take is to forget all else and move towards the victorious goal, solely embracing the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Enlightenment might seem like an ambitious fantasy, yet progress unfolds for those who refuse to accept things at face value but see beyond appearances. Your expectation acts as the hand of God, shaping the firmament in accordance with your anticipation. Consider this a truth, it operates akin to your imagination, if left unguided, it will expend your energy on futile and destructive thoughts and feelings. Similar to how a vine is pruned to eliminate unnecessary branches and roots, you can guide your imagination by withdrawing attention from all unpleasant and destructive ideas, concentrating instead on your established goal. The noble, joyous life you can experience is the outcome of wisely directing your imagination. Everything is as if not to venture far seeking what you already possess. Your imagination, giving credit to itself, assumes this, everything hinges on your concept of yourself, and what you do not acknowledge as true for yourself cannot manifest. The promise that to him who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he possesses will be taken away, Matthew 25 verse 29. Luke 8 verse 18, underscores the significance of holding in your imagination all that is positive and beneficial for you. Assume it, do it by envisioning that you already embody what you wish to be and already possess what you desire to have, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23 verse 7. Rest assured that you already embody what you wish to be, and there is no need to pursue it relentlessly. Despite having the freedom to act, like everyone else, you are subject to the law of assumption, regardless of your thoughts on free will. The truth is that your life experiences are shaped by what you assume to be true for yourself, consciously or not. In my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14 verse 23. These verses suggest that your imagination travels to the future, to one of the many mansions. The dwelling represents the desired state, and referring to an event before it happens is simply to immerse yourself in the desired state until it assumes the hues of reality. You prepare a place for yourself by imagining the wish fulfilled without consent. In doing so, you propel yourself from the state of wish fulfillment, where you are not physically present, to the place where you were physically just a moment ago. With an irresistible forward movement, you progress through a series of events until the physical realization of your desire, where you have already been in your imagination, there you will also be with your physical body. From where the rivers come, there they return, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7. Creation is complete, creativity is merely refined receptivity, as the entire content of all times and spaces, even if separated by a sequence of time, exists in the eternal infinite at this very moment. In other words, everything you have been or will be, and everything humanity has been or will be, already exists. 
This is what is meant by creation being finished, declaring that there is nothing more to create, only to manifest what is called creativity, which is simply becoming aware of what already exists. You are incrementally raising awareness of what already exists, you certainly cannot be something that you are not or experience something that does not already exist. You may have had the impression of hearing something or seeing something for the first time that you feel you've heard or seen before. All creation exists within you, and that is your destiny, to become increasingly aware of its infinite wonders, to experience larger and more wonderful portions of this creation. If creation is complete, then all events happening now, the natural question that arises is, what influences your time cycle or, better yet, what determines the events you live or attract? The answer lies in your concept of yourself, this is what determines the path you must follow. Assume the feeling of wish fulfilled, and pay attention to the path your attention follows. You will notice that as you remain faithful to this assumption, your attention attracts images and circumstances clearly related to the feeling you assumed. You are free to choose any concept about yourself, thus, you possess the power of intervention, the power to alter the course of your destiny. The process involves letting go of your current concept of yourself. Now, let us enter into silence. 